All right, guys, so uh, the next step we're going to do is get our reference plane in place. Um, so what I want to do is I'm going to come under my Create tab here, and I'm going to go and select Plane, and I'm going to click and drag, and I just want to basically I'll switch to hit F3 and switch to wireframe, um, hit W for my move. I, I just kind of want to make sure that the, the plane is covering my um, geometry that I, I'm concerned with, which is the orange uh, area that you see here. So I can, you know, shrink this down a little bit more. I don't want to get too small. I, I you know, I want to make sure I'm, I'm overlapping enough because that's going to come into play when we do our, um, our next step and actually uh, mold the geometry of the orange uh, roof surface to the reference plane that we're about to manipulate. And I want to increase my segments. I'll do something like uh, 20 here, or, you know, maybe 20 is a bit much. Maybe we just do 15. Um, and you know, I want to do like uh, I will do like 20 points across it, or maybe maybe we'll just do like a 20 by 20 grid, you know. So it's it's fairly uh, you know rect rectilinear base here um, coming across this thing, because um, in the end we're gonna have some pretty beefy trusses. So if I hit F3 to switch back in my wireframe, I can hold Alt down and middle click my scroll uh, button here, or click my hold, click and hold my scroll. Um, that brings me into my orthographic view. And I just want to pull this up until it just overlaps um, my my two roads here that I have coming up. So these two kind of little uh, antennas sticking out here of the roads. And I just want to bring that up um, until it kind of hits that. And once it hits that, um, that's kind of roughly where I want it. I want to then um, come and apply an edit poly to this. And I want to go into my uh, ver vertex layer, sub layer, which I could do here. Um, I could also hit one on the keyboard. Um, I could also come into my graphite modeling tools. And I want to make sure my soft selection is turned on. And, you know, again, I want to affect my fall off. So when I have some of these selected, um, you know, it's, I'm actually probably going to have to crank this up because we're doing, dealing with some fairly large, um, you know, areas here because this is a uh, kind of an inter intermodal transit center that we're working with. Um, so, you know, I want to make sure it's fairly large, so maybe it's like 500 feet, something like that is, is what we're dealing with. And I'll, I'll come over here to the, the middle of this guy and I'll select some of these points. And what I want to do is just kind of raise my geometry up here like this. And, um, you know, maybe I, I lower this back down to like 200 foot um, affected area. And then I'll, I'll kind of lower this down to that point, um, just so it's kind of within that road within that outer ring road there. So it's kind of something like that. And then maybe I come back here and I grab some of these points and uh, you know I just raise them up a little bit. But then maybe, you know, maybe that corner gets gets really high, something like that. Again, maybe I kind of grab all these corners, raise them up a little bit, and I grab this corner here and, and really kind of raise it up just so we get like a very dramatic corner over here. So I got kind of like a, um, you know, flying carpet type effect going on here. And then maybe, you know, maybe I just grab these last couple of points and, and also just kind of raise them up just to give that edge a kind of, you know, wave, wave like form. So, you know, something like that. Again, it's, it's just kind of whatever you want it to be, just kind of arbitrary at this point. Um, you know, maybe, maybe these, whoops, Maybe these points are a little bit too high, so I grab them and just kind of pull this down a little bit. Um, you know, some, something like that. I, again, it's all kind of arbitrary and just whatever. I'm, I'm just showing you the, the technique. So you could kind of refine that to, to be whatever. You could even, you know, if I select my points, I right click over my move, move tool. It brings up, um, you know, command where I can actually enter in the values here. Um, you know, I could also enter in the values down here um, within my, within my area. Um, and I can do it with, uh, you know, offsetting it based on, um, the world coordinates, which is kind of giving me, okay, th these are roughly where these points are located in, in world space. Or I could say, you know what, forget that, just move it up, you know, five feet. And when I do that with this activated, it, you know, it'll move it up five feet or, you know, I can enter it in here. Or again, this is kind of the absolute world value of, of where those overall points are located. So, you know, if, if I was in CAD, for example, and I, I imported something that would come in at zero, um, you know, versus this where it's at, uh, you know, 95 feet, you know, so, 
you can kind of uh, adjust that stuff and and do that um, within Max and actually give it some some values that uh, coordinate and correspond with some some um, you know actual dimensions it doesn't have to be something that's just arbitrary so I'm going to turn this off now and um, you know I'm kind of happy with with that shape um, you know I think that's good enough and actually I want to go back in here and just make sure my soft selection is off um, and then get out of there next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that uh, geometry uh, or I should say splines underneath and what I want to do is turn it into geometry by again just applying an edit poly when I apply that edit poly what it's doing again it's just taking that line work from CAD which if I go into like a front view is perfectly flat and I hit F for my front view and then Z to zoom and so if I go back into like a perspective uh, or maybe I go back into front and I hold alt and just kind of get into an orthographic view I, you know I'm looking at the way this geometry is divided up and it really isn't at all so if I were to take this and then try and conform it down to the surface basically merge it onto that surface and have it flow along that surface you can see that surface is is you know somewhat um, curved and and you know organic in nature it's, it's not gonna this this really rigid shape is not gonna apply to it because you, you can think of this as like a stiff piece of cardboard and you know um, it's it's not gonna bend bend around it very easy whereas if you come in here and uh, you take like your exacto knife and you start to cut a bunch of score marks into this cardboard and then you go and bend it along the surface it's gonna flow along that surface much more smoothly and easier and uh, line up to where it needs to line up so essentially that's what we're gonna do but you know we don't have to come in here and slice it up a bunch of times by hand um, you can put a subdivide modifier on that when you drop the subdivide modifier on um, which I have my button set up um, which again you know it's, it's shown in the first video how to show your buttons and then go into the configure modifier buttons um, or you pull it from your drop down list but I drop that subdivide on and I can lower the value a little bit just so that you know we get some some good subdivision in there um, then what I can do is put an edit poly on top of it to activate all of my graphite modeling tools you, you see as soon as I turn this edit poly off all that stuff goes away but when it's on um, again it activates all of those tools and similarly with my plane I have an edit poly here so what I want to do is I want to have that top surface selected go to my freeform here under surface I'm going to draw on surface and what I want to do is select the plane that is below here plane number one so I have that plane selected as my reference surface and then what I'm going to do is go to conform and again I still have that orange surface selected and I want to, you know, I, I think by default this is 20, um, and I, th I think by default this is like 0.1. So, you know, it, <clears throat> I, I've already kind of cranked up my values, so you want to turn it up to something like 200 for the strength, um, 10 for the conform. It depends on the scale you're working on. We're on a very large scale, so, you know, when I, when I click, I want this to drop down very quick. And you see, even 10 really doesn't do it. So I'm going to undo that. I'm going to do something like, oh, 75. And hopefully this drops down a lot quicker. You know, and even 75 is a little bit slow. Uh, so we'll go up to like 150. And so when I click and, and do that, you can see the shape. Essentially what it's doing is it's just dropping down to that reference surface that we have selected um, for the draw, draw on portion. And as I go and pan around this thing, I kind of have to hold, you know, hold the mouse button and go around and make sure everything gets snapped down here. Um, onto the surface. So with that snapped on to the surface here, uh, I go around and just kind of check and you know if I need to I, I click and just make sure that everything is is down to where it needs to be and you know it's basically geometry right on top of geometry so it might, it might look a little kind of funny um, you know it's not going to be clean but if I go and for example get out of conform and uh, you know pull the surface up and you know I'll get out of my wireframe mode here and go into like a front view for example you can see that surface is uh, pretty curved and um, you know pretty nice in terms of matching the geometry below so it's it's pretty much right where it needs to be um, kind of you know melted down to that surface and it has all of my cuts kind of you know pre fashioned into it so you know it's, it's a very nice thing to have um, have done here. So the next thing that um, I want to do just kind of quickly here is I'm going to add a uh, shell modifier to this just to give it some thickness. So if I zoom in, um, 
give it an outer amount of like, oh, not an inch, but a foot. Uh, you know, just to give it some some thickness, some dimension, and, and kind of bring it up um, above that surface. So so I still have it on the surface, but it's not, you know, if I go to the underside, you can see that kind of rough, crazy geometry on top of geometry. But, uh, you know, here it's it's a little bit cleaner, just easier for me to see kind of what's going on. And, you know, in the end, I'd probably have some thickness to it anyway. So um, that's kind of that. So if you're following along with the, the videos here, we're, we have our roof conform now. Um, after this, we're going to go in and actually build some of the trusses. And, and when I do this, um, I'm not going to do the one truss and then all that. I'm just going to build all of the trusses as if I were building this project kind of from scratch. Um, so you'll see how I do the one and then kind of copy over to get all of the other trusses all at once. Um, and then, you know, we'll get into the final, final detailing parts of this. But I'm going to stop the video here and um, we'll pick up with building, start to build some of the trusses in this using our reference geometry. Um, now that we have our surface conformed to that reference geometry.